This game is fiction. All names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. A loud noise startled Junpei awake, and his eyes snapped open. As they adjusted to the light, he realized that he didn't recognize his surroundings. With a crack, Junpei's head connected with something metal. He rolled over and threw out his hand to steady himself, but he found himself groping at empty air. His balance lost, and his still fuzzy mind struggling to understand what was going on, Junpei tumbled down to the cold, gray floor. Ouch! God damn it! Oh, what the hell? Junpei glared around the room, still trying to determine where he'd woken up. The fall had shaken the last cobwebs of sleep from his mind, and finally he understood where he'd fallen from. It was a bed. A three-level bunk bed, in fact. Junpei had fallen, apparently, from the topmost bunk. His shoulder hurt. His knee hurt. His hip hurt. His entire body hurt. He could feel a bump forming on his forehead, where he'd slammed it against the low ceiling. He wondered if that bump was the reason he felt his vision wavering a bit, but that seemed unlikely. At first he thought the tremor that ran through his legs was just another effect of his rude awakening, but as he looked around, he realized it was real. The whole room was shaking. Was it an earthquake, he wondered. It didn't seem likely. It was shaking far too quickly for an earthquake. Then again, Junpei had no idea what it was, if not an earthquake. He tried to tell himself it was important. Junpei rubbed the growing bump on his head and gingerly climbed to his feet. His balance regained, he finally took his first good look around the room and muttered to himself. Where am I? His pain momentarily forgotten. In the face of the confusion of his circumstances, Junpei looked around the room once again. Minutes passed while Junpei struggled to get his bearings. Then, as suddenly as they had begun, the tremors ceased. A cold silence fell over the room. From somewhere far away, Junpei could hear the sound of metal squeaking. He felt his stomach tighten. There were a thousand things the sound could have been but none of the things he could think of were good. In an attempt to distract himself, Junpei looked around the room once more. There was a stove that looked more antique than functional. The three-level bunk bed had mattresses that were so thin they were little more than blankets. On the other side of the room was an identical bed, and set in the wall between the beds was a slightly dirty iron door. The first thing Junpei noticed about the door was the number roughly emblazoned across it. On the surface of the door, in red paint, someone had written... Five? What's this five mean? Suspicious, and still utterly confused, Junpei approached the door, slowly. Standing at last in front of the door, Junpei grabbed hold of the L-shaped handle. A push yielded no movement, and a pull the same result. A few more tries cemented the truth in Junpei's mind. It wouldn't open. It didn't matter how much he pushed and shoved. The handle wouldn't budge. Next to the door was an odd-looking device that reminded Junpei of a card reader. It didn't take a genius to figure out that the odd-looking device was keeping the door shut. Junpei knocked. Hard on the door. Hey! Hello? Is anyone there? Open the door! There was no response. Junpei threw his left fist into the door, and stopped. What the hell is this? 
He wasn't really sure what else to say. On his left wrist was a bracelet of a sort he'd never seen before. In the center was a large LCD display. It looked like nothing else so much as a watch, but it clearly wasn't that. After all, it showed only a single number. Five. That's... that's the same as the door. True, the numbers were the same, but he had no idea what that might mean. All he knew was that it was strange, and new, and he wanted it off. Junpei flipped his hand over, as if to remove a watch, but... The other side of the bracelet was solid. No buckle, no clasp, nothing. He sighed and flipped the thing back over. There were a number of rivets around the rim of the face, perhaps... He pushed them, but nothing happened. On a watch, they might be dials for adjusting date or time, but on this bracelet, they did nothing. Junpei was at a loss. What was he going to do? Growing more desperate, he began to tug at it. However... Damn! It's no good. Damn thing won't come off! A steel ring ran from the face, around Junpei's wrist, and back into the face. He wouldn't be pulling the bracelet off any time in the near future. What the hell is the deal with this thing? Frustration and desperation were beginning to mix as the reality of the situation began to dawn fully on Junpei. So much was happening and none of it made sense. Junpei felt as though he were about to explode. Where am I? And why the hell am I here? Why? Why? What the hell happened to me? It was at that moment that he noticed the window. The window was round, rimmed in riveted brass, like a window from an early 20th century ship. What? Wait, am I in a ship? Junpei walked slowly toward the window. He could see nothing beyond it but thick, impenetrable darkness. Junpei squinted, trying to see something, anything. It was at that moment. What the? You gotta be kidding me! What the hell is going on here? A crack split the glass of the window, and for a moment Junpei stared at it. Then the window burst, what the and hell? water began to pour into the room. God damn it! Junpei yelled and spun around, his feet slipping on the water already coming through the window. He ran for the door. Hey! Anyone! Is anyone there? Come on! If you're there, say something! As Junpei screamed and pounded on the door, the water began to rise. It was now ankle-deep on the floor and rising quickly toward his knees. Things were not looking good for Junpei. Not good at all. He needed to find a way out. And quickly. Junpei ran a hand across his forehead brushing the sweat out of his eyes, and looked around the room. Okay, time to find a way out. Alright, stay calm. You can handle this. Just pretend there isn't a whole bunch of water flooding in through a port side window. Alright, okay, let's go. What's this? There appears to be some sort of yellow text freezing time around me. Even the water has stopped moving. As if someone is really impatient and doesn't want to take the time to read it. Doesn't seem like there's anything hidden in the sink. This is the only drain in the room. Old picture frame. There's a picture of a ship in it and screws keeping the back on, but this doesn't really help me right now. I need to... I don't know what I need to do, but I'll hold on to this for now. What's this? A note. Okay, water is touching my ankles, but at least I have a note. <laughs> hmm, well, I can reach this bunk. Might as well look through it. Huh, damn, nothing here. What's this under the pillow? Another note. The note's got markings in blue and markings in red. There's an arrow that goes all the way across the paper. It's red under the red symbols, blue under the blue symbols. There's a blue briefcase on top of the bed. I can keep looking till the cows come home. All I'm gonna find up here is that pillow. 
Damn it! Isn't there anything else I can use? There's a pipe at the other end of the bed. There's nothing up top. This is the door to the stove. Well, it opens easily enough. Sure wish the door to get out of here was that easy to open. Well, that solves the mystery of whether or not this stove has been used before. What's this? It looks red. A screwdriver? What's a screwdriver doing in a stove? Well, the screwdriver got those screws off easily enough. Here's the picture. So someone wrote a bunch of numbers and symbols on the back of the picture, huh? Ah, it's this yellow text again! Get out of here! I got stuff to do! Well, let's see if there's anything in here. Huh. Looks like there is. A key? Yeah. There's a little blue key in the bottom of this pot. Ah. What's in here? A red briefcase. I can't do anything. There's blue briefcases, red briefcases. But nothing helping me right now except... What's this? A red key. Junpei grabbed the key and shoved it into his pocket. He intended to leave immediately, but something stopped him. His reflection stared back at him from the mirror, but he had scarcely recognized himself. I look terrible. Looks like something a dinosaur shat out. His confusion was well justified. His face was drawn and pale, and the dark circles under his eyes made him look as though he was nearly dead. Man, what the hell happened to me? How did I end up here? Even as he said it, something in his mind opened and a memory bobbed to the surface. It was the last thing Junpei remembered before waking up in this strange room. It was past midnight when he came home. Junpei shuffled up the stairs and opened the door to apartment 201. Inside was his apartment, a small one-bedroom affair that ran him about $630 a month. He moved into it when he entered college. And so far, he'd been there for three years and seven months. He stepped inside and turned on the lights. The fluorescent lights on the ceiling blinked and flickered slowly to life, as if waking from a deep slumber. Their cold light illuminated the landscape he'd come home to so many times before. Everything was as he'd left it. The magazines piled up in the corner, the textbooks collecting dust, the CD cases covering the floor the jeans and t-shirts he'd worn the day before, then tossed onto the floor. There was one thing that didn't belong, however. There was a breeze. Breaths of cold night air wafted into his apartment, carrying the smells of autumn with them. The white curtain framing his window swayed gently in the wind. Huh? That's weird. Did I leave that open? Junpei walked toward the window, trying to remember if he'd closed it or not before he left. One of the panes was hanging open. He stuck his head out and looked around. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Junpei shrugged. He must have just left it open earlier. He closed the window. Then it happened. Junpei turned and found himself face to mask with a man dressed all in black. The man wore a deep hood and a bulky gas mask. His face was entirely hidden. Junpei tried to scream, but all he could manage was a strangled croak. He tried to step toward the man, but his legs could no longer support his weight. Junpei collapsed to the floor, a crumpled heap of limbs, or a discarded puppet. Too late, he noticed the white smoke that was quickly filling his apartment. A small object, shaped distressingly like a grenade, sat on the floor in front of his face, hissing. The white smoke poured out of it at an incredible rate. The smoke had grown so thick that the details of Junpei's apartment began to fade into the white haze. He could feel his mind begin to fade as well, a white haze that was not the smoke creeping into the edges of his vision. Consider this privilege. You have been chosen. A rasping voice wormed its way out of the gas mask. It was cold and harsh and distorted in some way Junpei couldn't put his finger on. You are going to participate in the game. The Nonary Game is a game where you put your life on the line. 
That was the last thing Junpei remembered. The white smoke overpowered him, the masked man faded from his vision, and he felt his consciousness fall away into the white mist. That's right! That guy with the gas mask! That son of a bitch must have taken me here! As to who the man was, or might have been, Junpei had no idea. Indeed, he wasn't even sure that the assailant had been a man. The voice had been cold and mechanical, likely passed through a voice changer, and the body had been covered in a thick cloak. Who was the man in the mask? You have been chosen. Junpei remembered that much, but... What it might mean, that was beyond him. Junpei had no idea where he was or why he was there. There was only one thing from his memory that seemed important. You are going to participate in the game. The Nonary Game. It's a game where you will put your life on the line. The Nonary Game, huh? What the hell is the Nonary Game? God damn it! With a yell, Junpei drove his fist into the mirror. No dice. It's locked tight. Let's see if there's anything in the keyhole. I hope this blue key works. Alright, let's see what happens if I put the blue key in the keyhole. And... Uh, nothing. Guess I'm gonna need some sort of code for the dial. Try 0263. Alright, let's see if these numbers work. Turn of the key and... Hey! It looks like it's working! Yes! Alright, let's open it up! Yes! It opened! Looks like there's something in here. What is this? A file? Oh, awesome. Ah, the yellow text! It's back! Oh, man. Oh, it's gone. Right what is this? Digital root. Digital root? Is that anything like a square root? Please tell me this is an algebra. I failed algebra like three times. If I have to deal with this, uh, I, I might as well be dead. Let the water rise up. I'm good. I'm good. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, whatever. I'll try to figure this out. Something about a double digit. I gotta add a number in the tens place to the ones place, keeping it the same manner as the single. Okay, I am dead. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I didn't want to live anyway. Okay, I don't know. Keep trying. Keep trying. Okay. Six, seven, eight. That'd be six plus seven plus eight. It's twenty-one. Uh, two plus one, uh, three. So. That would be three. Okay, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, I can do this. I see. So I just keep adding numbers until I get a single digit number. Oh, it looks like there's something on the back of this thing. A notebook, a pen, a calculator, a stack of key cards. Huh, okay, let's try the red briefcase. Uh, seven, four, uh, eight, five, I guess. Yes! Yes! I unlocked it! It's opening. There's nothing left in the briefcase. These cards with numbers on them. I'm pretty sure this is where I'm supposed to use them. Alright, let's slide this card and see if it works. And... It's not working. Why? Damn it. No. No, that's right. I still have the cards I haven't used. The only door in and out of this room is the one right next to the device. Damn it. Not again. There aren't any more cards in here. I've only got one other hint. Of course. The files. That file said something about a digital root. A digital root. The digital root. Oh, what am I supposed to do with... There's a five on the door. Do I have to get a digital root of five? I'm not really sure about this. Oh, whatever. It's worth a shot. Let's see if this works. Just slide the cards that give me the digital root of five through the reader. Think of the digital root. It has to equal five. So... Judging by all that, it need to be six, seven, and one. 
Alright, I think this is gonna work. There we go. That's a new noise. Huh? Did it just unlock? Well, that light was red, and now it's blue. No doubt about it. There's nothing keeping me in here now. Time to go! Accompanied by a wall of angry water, Junpei shot out of the room and into the opposing hall. Gasping to catch his breath, he looked around. He was in a narrow hallway. The water that had followed him out of the room was rapidly pouring out of the door. It flowed quickly down the hallway and slammed into the foot of the short flight of stairs. Just five steps, in fact. And at the top of this short staircase. Door! Another door! Junpei leapt up the stairs, straight for the door. The door burst open and Junpei exploded out of it, only to freeze in his tracks. What other possible response could there have been to what he saw? What, what the hell? His voice trailed off, and all he could do was stare. A polished floor stretched out before him, ornate staircases rising up from the edges, each one of them equidistant from the others. The stairs and pillars were solid wood, and Art Nouveau embellishments and decorations covered the walls and pillars. It looked like nothing so much as the entrance to a luxurious mansion from the early 1900s. Junpei couldn't help but wonder. Was he really in a ship? The water quickly filling the hallway behind him suggested that yes, he was. As he looked, a fresh wave rolled out of the room he'd been in, gathering speed as it moved toward the stairs. Yeah, that's what I thought. This is totally a book. Wait, what the hell? A wave! Shit! I gotta get out of here! Junpei spun around, his wet shoes squeaking in protest on the polished floor, and ran toward the tremendous staircase in front of him. As he ran, he glanced quickly at the plates mounted on the wall, denoting the decks of the ship. He took the stairs two at a time, not entirely sure where he would find himself. Just as he began to wonder where, in fact, the stairs did lead, Junpei saw another person out of the corner of his eye. He stopped short, nearly tripping over the next stair, and looked. It wasn't just one person he'd seen. On the landing to the left of the stairs, there were four people staring at him. And on the right side, three more. All told, there were seven of them. It looked as though they'd been on their way down the stairs. They'd stopped short when they saw Junpei, their eyes wide. He'd done the same, of course, and now they stood there staring at one another. Junpei didn't move, one foot placed awkwardly on the next step, in the middle of a stride. Who were these people? This entire interaction lasted only a matter of seconds. The woman spoke to Junpei, and time began to move again. I guess there's another one of us now. The woman was dressed, Junpei thought, rather like a dancer. Her clothes covered very little, and her prodigious jewelry little more. Hey, you! Come on! Hurry your ass up! With no further ceremony, she ran, straight past Junpei and toward the doors behind him. The sudden proximity of a woman with such striking assets left Junpei momentarily stunned. But the others wasted no time and quickly followed the strange woman. The first to pass Junpei was a young man with silver hair. He threw a quick glance in Junpei's direction as he ran, muttering, hm. One of us, huh? Following him was an older man, his face calm and without fear. Soft wrinkles sprouted from his eyes, and he came close enough as he passed for Junpei to see wisps of gray in his hair. His composure and shock of hair struck Junpei as rather like that of an elderly lion. Going up won't do you any good. There are two doors, but neither of them will open. The next to speak was a girl with pink hair and a high voice. Come on! Aren't you coming? You gotta hurry! Her small hand was wrapped around the wrist of another man. His eyes were closed, almost as though he were sleeping. His features were graceful, almost serene, and he was dressed rather elegantly for someone his age. Something about his posture seemed very refined, and Junpei couldn't help feeling he was noble and dignified somehow. He'd certainly never seen one, 
but this man seemed like what Junpei had always imagined a prince would be like. That's nine of us then. All the cards are in hand. Next time on 999. Welcome aboard. I am Zero. The room I woke up in had a number on the door, just like that. You too, eh? Oh my gosh. Is that you, Jumpy? Uh, Akane? Project.